resurrection today and happy father's day to all the fathers out there i hope that you guys will enjoy your sunday and your father's day just a couple announcements as we get started big celebration 
If you didn't know, we had VBS last week and it went off with a blast. We had 135 kids, 55 volunteers, uh, and a big thank you to all the volunteers who were there, um, all the way from high schoolers all the way up. Huge thank you. We couldn't have done it without all of you. And all of you will get a little glimpse into VBS with the children's message today, um, so stay tuned for that. A um, couple of other announcements. I'll be starting a new Bible study this week um, on Thursday for families with kids, high school age on down. Um, and anybody else at home? Uh, but let me know if you guys have any questions about it. If you want to join us, it'll be at our house uh, called Households of Faith. And also, busy time in the summer. We're already looking forward to confirmation next year, in the, or starting in the fall. So we will be having two parent um, and family meetings, information meetings, on June 26th and June 29th. That's coming up next week. And today we get to start a new sermon series, and we'll hear all about that in just a few moments also. A lot of stuff happening because God's church never really rests, because we're always working with God and his mission, and today is part of that also. I invite you to rise as we begin our worship. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Salvation belongs to the Lord, your, your blessing be on your people. I cried aloud to the Lord, and He answered me from His holy hill. Brothers and sisters in Christ, because of our sin we have rebelled against God. Moreover, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins to our gracious God. O Lord, before we sought you, you came seeking us. Before faith came, we were held captive under the law. Our sins have controlled us and thrown us into confusion. In our 
our sin, we are helpless to save ourselves. In your mercy, come to save us. In your forgiveness, help us to know the freedom of your truth. Release us from the grip of our fears, and give us your peace. Amen. God has sent the Spirit of his Son into your hearts. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Cast out all sins and evil desires from us, and pour into our hearts your Holy Spirit to guide us into all blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, beginning at verse 1. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and making offerings on bricks, who sit in tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat pig's flesh and broth of tainted meat is in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are the smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their lap both your iniquities and your father's iniquities together says the Lord, because they made offerings on the mountains and insulted me on the hills. I will measure into their lap payment for their former deeds. Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth offspring from Jacob and from Judah, possessors of my mountains. My chosen shall possess it, and my servants shall dwell there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from Galatians chapter 3, starting at verse 23. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to his promise. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, 
but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning, everybody. I invite you to rise if you're able to do so for the Alleluia verse. The words from the verse come from our gospel reading. We say them together. Alleluia. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please have a seat and welcome Kelsey Sorrell up front for a brief message. This is a message from our VBS that is very appropriate for today also. Thank yes. You. Good morning to all the families and kids watching from home and all of you big kids here because are we ever really not Jesus' children? So we're going to do a children's message. So at VBS we learned all about God's power, uh, Jesus' power in us and what it gives to us. And it was themed about trains. So I have this cute little wind-up train here. And this was one of the experiments that I got to do in front of the kids. See if it works for you guys today. So we have a bridge here, just like how in life we come across many bridges and we have problems in our life, we have struggles, we have things that are really, really hard no matter how old we are, whether we're this little and we're struggling with walking and talking and doing things on our own, or whether we are a grown up and we are struggling with real life problems, with financial issues, with people that are passing away, people who are sick. We always come across big cliffs in our life. And when we try to get across them on our own, we find that we are not strong enough. We never are able to be strong enough. And now there are lots of things I could do to make this bridge stronger, right? I could get heavy duty card stock. I could get another box. I could change this bridge, make it stronger. But that's not what God's power does for us. God's power changes us exactly how we are. And 
and we're able to get across those struggles and those, those hard things in life. God's power in us helps us be stronger, bolder, wiser, have hope. Um, without God's power in us, we would not be able to do those hard things. And because of Jesus' power, we have so much strength. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for us. Dear Lord, thank you so much for all of the kids that you bring here to Resurrection, for all of the kids that learned at VBS about Jesus' power, uh, for all of us here this morning, God, um, please just let us know that your power is within us and that through you we can do so much more than we can do on our own. Uh, thank you for loving us and always giving us your power, even when we sometimes don't want it or turn away from you, Lord. You are always there for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are indeed beginning a new sermon series. It starts today and goes throughout the month of July. And it's called Messy Discipleship. We'll be looking at Old Testament texts especially. So the, the text for the sermon today is the one from Isaiah 65. If you want to just have that in front of you as we continue. We normally think of messy disciples as a New Testament thing, right? Peter and James and John, all the disciples of Jesus who didn't quite understand it first, and then, of course, after Jesus' resurrection, finally the light bulb came on. But we realize that being messy is not something that started with them. It goes way back to the beginning where Adam and Eve first appeared on the scene. And it continues up until today with you and me. Being saints and sinners at the same time is a messy business. But Jesus enters into our messes and draws us to himself. In Jesus, God says, here I am. In Jesus, God comes looking for the people of the world that all might find him those who are called by his name and those who are not. This past week, I ran across a headline that caught my attention. Record high percentage of Americans rate U.S. moral values as poor. 
Folks at Gallup, Inc. have been asking this question about the moral state of our country for the last 20 years. And this past week, they let it be known that since they started keeping track of the answer to that question, this year, 2022, was the highest on record so far for those who say that the moral values of our country are deteriorating. And then just, I think it was the day before yesterday, there was another poll that came out. I don't know if these topics are sort of on their radar right now or what. But they asked the question, do you believe in God? To get responses. And the percentage of people in the United States who said they did not believe in God was the highest it's ever been since 1945 when they first started asking that question. Now, I know that this information probably is not exactly new to any of us here. You probably could have guessed at that outcome without even having the benefit of these polls that are going on. And of course, the outcome of the poll is not to really gauge the Christian faith because our faith is not focused on comparing the morality of one person to another. And it's not just faith in some generic God either, right? There's a lot going on. A lot on our minds these days. High cost of gas, the high cost of credit, the high cost of just about everything. And so you may be sitting there thinking, Pastor, do you really have to talk about the sorry state of morality and faith today when there's so many things we're already concerned about? I get it. I hear you. But I mentioned these two polls published this past week because they demonstrate, I think, what people deep down in their bones in our nation are feeling right now. God, where are you? This place is a mess. Aren't you going to do something about it? I don't know about you, but more often than I care to admit, that happens to be my default setting. There's a frustrated, judgmental person inside most of us angry white guys, and yours truly is one of those two. I might not be an old angry white guy yet, but I do find myself talking back to the news on TV every so often, so I think I'm in training, probably. We're not the last people on earth to wonder about what appears as God's inactivity in the world, right? And we're certainly not the first to be frustrated by what appear to be the messes of the world, most of which we have a share in, to some extent. God, this world I live in, this world I've had a hand in, it's a mess. That's not so far away from what people in the prophet Isaiah's day were saying in Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64 is the chapter that precedes the text you just heard read a few moments ago. In Isaiah 64, God's people seem to have a list of gripes about just how messy the world has become. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, they cry out to God in frustration. In our text today, it seems as if God shares in that frustration. Though he said, here I am, here I am, no one seems to be listening. They are a people who do not ask for me. They are a people who do not seek me out, God says. God has spread out his hands all day. That's a phrase usually reserved for an attitude of begging in prayer, reserved for people. And God talks about himself and says, I have been holding out my hands, and nobody is listening. God's the one doing the begging. Everyone ignores him. And so God seems to have his list of all that's wrong with the world. As you read through this text, and you see some of those messes that appear to be on God's list that seem rather foreign to us today, there is an essence to them, I think, that we can say we understand. They're all about people living in rebellion against God. They're about people not reverencing God, not loving God, not trusting in God above all things. People, to quote Isaiah, who are walking in a way that is not good, 
following their own devices. Israel in Isaiah's day was not living as a people who had been called by God's name. And the same is true for all of us, God's people today. I don't need to draw you a picture. You know what it looks like. Now, just because we're focusing on the Old Testament for our sermon series doesn't mean we just chuck out the rest of the Bible or the New Testament as we focus on what the prophets have to say. And all the more so today as we see Jesus, who appears to have the messes that are on God's heart today on his mind, as he goes across the Sea of Galilee from the land where the people of Israel are living to a place where others lived, foreigners lived, non-Jews. The place of the Decapolis, ten Hellenistic cities on the other side. And it's here that Jesus rescues a naked, demon-possessed man. A guy bound in chains, either because he was a harm to himself or dangerous for those around him. A man living in a tomb, probably eating pig's meat. Just the sort of behavior that God calls out as messy in our Old Testament text for today. And it's this messy guy, someone not called by God's name, a person who had not sought out Jesus, a guy who, had, because of the spiritual warfare raging inside of him, could never have been anything but terrified of encountering someone like Jesus. And it's this very person Jesus seeks out. The very person Jesus heals. Jesus demonstrates by overcoming the work of the adversary in this man, there is no power on heaven and earth that can ultimately bind, burden, or break the people among whom he dwells. That there is no one and nothing, not even the capital A adversary himself, who can ever separate frail humanity from the love of God in him. And Jesus even goes outside the boundaries of God's people to do it. In our distress, in our judgments of others, we may still ask or wonder, God, where are you? This place is a mess. Aren't you going to do something about it? Or to quote the prophet Isaiah speaking on behalf of the people of Israel, won't you tear open the heavens and come down? God says to all, both those who know him and those who do not yet know him and call on his name, here I am. God has torn open the heavens in the person of his own dear son, Jesus Christ. Jesus' victory over evil on the banks of the Sea of Galilee near Gadara that day foreshadowed his ultimate victory over the evil one by his crucifixion and resurrection. It appeared on the night of Jesus' death that the devil had won. It appeared that the anxieties of the world were well-founded. That the question, God, where are you, might never, ever be fully answered. But then, on Easter morning, Jesus' messy disciples would see and encounter him. They would receive peace from the one who had taken away their guilt and shame. They would come to know that Jesus had gone to battle for each of them, his messy disciples. Peter, James, Mary Magdalene, Martha, the garrison demoniac who doesn't have a name. He had fought the only battle that truly mattered against the author of evil and won. And you and I, Jesus' messy disciples today, share in that victory. To all who cry out today, God, where are you? To all, whether we are, they are called by God's name or not, both Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, whether male or female, Jesus is God's here I am for the world. I like to tell people that when I was working amongst colleagues that had a, a very sort of passionate mission focus years ago as a missionary myself, uh, there were ways that they would talk about the world that avoided those stark contrasts that we often use, right? We talk about Christians, non-Christians, uh, believers, non-believers. 
The contrast is still there, but my colleagues would use the exp- didn't use that expression Christian, non-Christian, or believer, non-believer, but Christian, not yet Christian. Believer, not yet believers. God's message to us then in our Old Testament and Gospel reading for this weekend is this. Look, I'm certainly here for all of those who are called by my name, but I'm also here for those who are not called by my name. In other words, the Lord is saying, those of you who are called by by my name shouldn't assume that you're the only ones that I have my eye on. My grace is always bigger, always more abundant than you can ever expect or can even imagine. In the end, there is no distinction. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. But, St. Paul goes on, all are declared not guilty freely by God's grace through the rescue that came by Christ Jesus. That is why God says to the prophet Isaiah, I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. Those are not the words of frustration on God's part. They're words of grace. St. Paul quoted those words in his letter to the Romans to demonstrate how God's mercy extended to the Gentiles, to those outside of Israel and the people of promise. So the world we only see as messy is a world that Jesus came to save. And those in need of that rescue include each and every one of us. We have been given the gift of that rescue in Christ Jesus through holy baptism and the gift of faith, but our call is to come again and again to our God to know the extent of his gifts that he gives to us. Do we have our moments, our times of frustration with the world as it is? Yes, we do. Are there times when it seems like the world or some of the people in it deserve to get the comeuppance that comes their way? Maybe so. God does come in judgment and in grace. There will be a remnant and only a remnant, as Isaiah would say in Isaiah 65. But in the end, the messiness of the world does not result in God's frustration. It rests in God's mercy and grace. With God's loving kindness. With God's steadfast love and certain... that. Nobody, certainly not you or I, nobody has done anything to deserve. And God's plan that now extends into the new heaven and the new earth is to be with his people here, offering a double portion for our sins. So by the Holy Spirit's leading, we give up the need to judge others. By the Holy Spirit's empowering, we no longer take God's grace to each and every one of us for granted either. On this Father's Day, I can't help but remember my dad and the moments that his here I am encouraged me and refocused me. I used to run middle distance in high school, and there were any number of people, my friends, other students, people that I knew that would show up and cheer us on as we ran around the track. But it was my dad, when he could get off from work, didn't always happen, but when he could get off, when there wasn't an emergency going on in the lab, and he could be there and stand there, wasn't a loud guy, wasn't shouting out, but just seeing him there and knowing he was there to encourage and support me helped me try a little harder and run a little faster. It was his way to say, here I am. And that gift of presence was a gift I won't ever forget. Today, God says to all who are running the race of life, here I am. And we come together. We come together with those lists that we're making and those frustrations that we feel. We come to the presence of God. We come to receive the very presence of the Almighty God in ordinary bread and wine made extraordinary by the Word of God where we receive Jesus' body and blood together with it. This is my blood shed for you. God is here. He is with us. Whether you have called on him today or not, God's son, Jesus, is our Emmanuel. God with us.
promises to be with us to the very end of the age. And so ours is a missionary God with hands outstretched for the messy people of the world. Today he repeats the words of the missionary Isaiah on the day of Isaiah's calling, Here I am. And today we recognize, because of Jesus, here we are too. Messy disciples, though we may be, we follow where he leads. And as we do the peace that passes all understanding, we'll keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. As those gathered here by our present God, let us rise and confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for their mission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please uh, have a seat very briefly. At this time, we uh, would be receiving new members. As it turns out, there are two families in the 8 o'clock service that are not with us today that can't be here. Uh, but what I would like to do is just have you turn to page 11 of your bulletin and just see that list of names as I read them out loud. The following uh, families will be taken into membership this weekend. Chris and Gina Aladdin with their daughters Avery and Emily. Diane Bresnick and her mother June Buckler. Jonathan and Elena Sinsawicki with their children Cadence, Luke, and Holden. Bruce and, Michael and Michelle Collins. Matthew and Leah Combs and their son Aiden. Robert and Adrienne Field, their son Bobby. Michael and Christina Fuller, Kayo, Jonas, and Niall, Megan Menno with her children Anissa, Mason, and Mackenzie, and Steve and Esther Robinson. We remember each of them in our hearts, grateful to God for his gift of them to us, and we uh, take a moment now to um, uh, offer up a prayer of thanksgiving as we remember God's gifts to us today. We pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made these people your own. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Now at this time, I invite you to stand as we share the peace of Jesus Christ with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you. Take a minute and share that message with somebody nearby. As you make your way back to your seats, while we weren't welcoming any, any new members in this 
service, we will be welcoming plenty throughout the, throughout the morning, so we will sing together our song, Welcome to the Family, for all of our new members. I invite you now to rise for prayer. Today as we pray and as you see in your bulletin, we will say a special prayer for all of our fathers and our congregation throughout the church, throughout the world. We pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for fathers, men whom we have entrusted with the task of following in your ways and passing on the faith to children. We thank you for their courage, strength, and faithfulness. To fathers, you have given the great responsibility of leading families. We pray that you would teach and lead them to be good fathers, no matter how old or young their children are. Give them hearts like your heart, that they may become known for compassion, tenderness, and mercy. May they live lives full of love and grace. May they not be afraid to use appropriate discipline and may they lead their families with great wisdom and gentleness. Help fathers to grow daily in knowledge and understanding of your Son, Jesus, and grant them the wisdom to impart this knowledge of faithfully to their children and to all who depend upon them. Send your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to all, fa to all fathers who sorrow for children who have died, who are ill, who are estranged from their families, or who are in trouble of any kind. Help grieving fathers to rely on your tender mercy, granting them hope in the midst of their grief. We ask your blessing on all those to whom you have entrusted the responsibility of fatherhood. May your Holy Spirit constantly inspire and strengthen them to faithful service through self-giving love. We pray all of this in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ has broken the grip of sin and freed us to live a new life. Let us pray for all who struggle against sin and death and for everyone in their various needs. O oh God, you lavish love has sought us out and continues to seek out those for whom you sent your Son to save. We give you thanks for your, understand, for your undeserved grace and pray that all people may hear your call to forgiveness, salvation, and life. Empower your whole church and all pastors, teachers, and evangelists with your Holy Spirit to proclaim in all the world your power to save. Bend the wills of those who would oppose the progress of your kingdom, that in all the nations of the world the power of your word may lead into ways of peace. 
Strengthen and preserve us in true faith by means of your holy body and blood this day. And give us the love to empower us to testify to others of your great salvation. And Lord Jesus Christ, as you have called us to be your disciples, your messy disciples, you enter into the mess of our world. In a world where too often we cry out, God, where are you? You are here present. Your answer and your cry is, here I am for the whole world. May we see your presence in our daily lives. May we rest in your mercy and grace, knowing your control, and moreover, knowing your love for all the world. May we be used by you as your disciples to bring your mercy and grace to all those we see in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the many ways that you use your people at resurrection. This past week, we especially celebrate in thanksgiving for the gift of Vacation Bible School. May you be with all of the children who gathered together within our walls, that they may continue to grow in the relationship that you have started with them, that you may guide them in faith, forgiveness, and grace, always surrounding them with your arms of love. And we thank you for the many volunteers that made this effort possible, that you may continue to use them in the many ways and the many places you send them throughout the world, whether it be Vacation Bible School or the many other areas that you use them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Savior, Jesus Christ, we read many stories of the ways you have acted in this world in the Gospels. We read how you cast out demons, heal the sick, and raise the dead. We still, to this day, come before you, asking for your healing power in the lives of those we love. Today we ask for your healing upon Grant, upon a grandson, Ken, Harold, Donald, Penny, Randy, and Alan. May your will be done in their lives. May they find comfort in you. And may they look to you for love, grace, and strength. We also pray for the family and friends of Sandra Davis upon her passing. May all those who love her know your love. And may they find hope in the power of the resurrection. We also pray for upcoming surgeries this week for Pastor Dan and his valve replacement. May he find power in your hope and bless the hands of the doctors and nurses that surround him that they may use the gifts you have given them for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for your peace throughout our world. Especially now, we continue to remember the war in Ukraine. May you bring an end to that unnecessary war. May you bring healing where there needs healing. Repentance where repentance is needed. Strength and protection upon all who are there. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, while we here are able to practice free worship of you no matter where we go, we know that there are many of our brothers and sisters in Christ scattered throughout the world who do not have those same freedoms. We pray for the Lutheran Church in Uganda, and we pray for persecuted Christians throughout the world, that they may find hope in your resurrection. May they always look to the freedom that they have in you, the love you have for all people, and the home that you are preparing for them in our heavenly home in the new creation. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you.
The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.